Welcome to the Pyramid Air YouTube channel, friends. Today I am joined by one of my coworkers, Ron Duker. Uh, Ron is going to be me for archery for you guys. So um, Ron's got a wealth of experience shooting crossbows, shooting bows. Uh, I I've recently gotten into vertical archery myself, um, but Ron is far more knowledgeable and is going to be a much better uh, person to hold your hand through navigating the wonderful world of archery. So, Ron, thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Tyler. Uh, let's talk through, like, how long have you been hunting uh, with, with archery equipment? Hunting officially 20 plus years. Wow. So, started out with vertical archery, got into a little bit of traditional archery, and then had a couple use cases for crossbows which then turned me on to pretty much the whole uh, avenue and angle of every type of archery there is. Never really gotten into target archery. I'm more of hunting, yeah, sure. um, but everybody has their fit, right? Absolutely, yeah. So, you know, for me, I definitely approach things more from the target side of, of stuff. I mm -hmm. hunt as well, but uh, target archery is, is really captivating for me, just as target shooting with air guns is. Um, but I, I think the interesting thing about archery is that I would say the predominant use case for archery equipment is hunting less than target shooting. Absolutely. And a whole other set of challenges that you face when you don't have an environment and a situation that goes exactly the way you have it set up and the way that you want it. Backyard archery is one thing. I did that for about 10 years prior to shifting to hunting. And the whole idea was you just start getting that bug after you're hitting ar archery targets and you're hitting 3D targets for a while. You're like, ah, oh, man, I really want that, the, the real thing. Yeah. Give me the challenge of shooting a whitetail. Uh, that's what really got me into it. Yeah, and, and same thing here, guys. I, I picked up a, a bow and went hunting for the first time about mm -hmm. four years ago. Uh, and and the, the minute you see that first deer in the woods, you're like, Oh, Heart starts okay. thumping. Yeah, and, and I think a <laughs> hunter lot of, mode switches on. Yes, yes, yes. And, that, and that feeling really, um, for me, it w was an immediate connection and something that I was like, I need to do this again. Absolutely. Uh, and, and I think a lot of you guys probably feel the exact same way. Um, the interesting thing for for us on the air gun side is that you know we've had arrow firing air guns for a number of years. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things I, I want to help with you know Ron here to talk you guys through is kind of the use cases for different archery equipment and and an air gun firing an arrow isn't really archery equipment and we can say that I think because well it's not defined as such by really sure. any state uh, sure. from a hunting standpoint but from a practical application perspective you know can you say that there's really any difference between an arrow firing air gun that shoots you know 450 to 500 feet a second and the latest and greatest 10 point or Raven that's shooting 450 to 500 feet a second? I mean, listen, as far as aero trajectory, it's basically identical. Sure. Um, a lot of it is very similar. It's the platforms and we're, I mean, really it's the question of the platform and the feel on how you want to approach it. Um, but what I would say is, is shooting a dragon claw is a bit louder <laughs> than fair. some of the other implements. And, and I would kind of just, my experience, this isn't true 100% overall. Typically the quietest, most stealthiest option as far as the animal being able to hear something is actually gonna be your vertical, vertical bow. You can get really quiet with those to the point where uh, my average harvest is 12 yards and under from a tree stand or from a saddle platform. And hopefully we can get some video of that for you so you know that I'm, I'm, not, I'm not joking on that. Um, and then the next quiet is usually the crossbow and it depends on what you go. Typically the heavier and faster crossbows are gonna be louder, that's the trade off to speed. Yep. Um, and then the dragon claw, you get some serious speed and you get some serious accuracy. With that comes then the loudness. Absolutely, um, and that's most arrow firing air guns to be fair. And yeah. it, you know, but I, I was always surprised, uh, you know, I've shot a handful of crossbows now that we've started carrying a, a ton of them. Mm -hmm. and, and Ron's absolutely right, they can crack. I, you know, some of those uh, 500 foot per second models are certainly not quiet, but the whole idea being that the arrow is going to get there, but hopefully it, it, it does, you know, yeah, a little yeah. bit keep, faster. Keep yeah. it under 40 yards and you the arrow is going to get there, you'll be fine. Yeah, yeah, and I think the same logic from a distance standpoint applies to the arrow firing air guns just as well to crossbow or to a vertical bow. Obviously, there are use cases where you might shoot a little further with yeah. one of these, uh, you know, depending on what kind of game you're after, of course. But, you know, mm -hmm. I think the big thing for, for me is that when I get asked about you know, oh, should I go with an arrow firing air gun or crossbow? A lot of it's legality. 
you can't, you Absolutely. know, you simply air, air gun hunting isn't as uh, popular from uh, from states adopting it uh, as crossbows and, and certainly not as vertical archery goes. Um, there are way more states that will allow you to use that crossbow for whitetail than will allow you to use an arrow firing air gun. So while the performance mm -hmm. is similar, you know, where you're actually able to use them is not. And that kind of sucks. Yes, it does. But uh, it means that for those of you that live somewhere, uh, you know, where you can't use this to go hunt big game, you've got your option right here uh, in, in crossbows. And, and that's really great because there's a lot of the same kind of fundamentals of shooting in a crossbow Absolutely. as there is as a, in an air gun, which I think is great. But I think the big controversial topic in the archery world, and I hear it myself at, at the local bow shop, is like the vertical bow hunter versus the crossbow hunter. This is something I'd say to all archers and air gunners out there. It's all a function of fitting what's best to you in your hunting situation, as well as you and what you, what you like to do and how much time you have. So my, my use case scenario was, I had a deer charge me, a 10 point buck charge me when I was going into the stand in probably 2014, I think it was. It was like October 17th. And so I scurried up, uh, my uncle has a ladder stand. I don't hunt in ladder stands typically anymore. Um, I'm more of a saddle guy, but I was climbing up his stand cause that was closest and I was getting charged by a deer and he meant business. And so I got up there and I was looking and I waited and I waited and all of a sudden I'm like, okay, sun starts coming up and I can see him standing there, but I can't make out his points. I could just see his breath puffing at me. That's where the crossbow came in was actually when I started tracking him down, because I don't use the use of any cameras or anything like that, I more take a look and see what's happening in the different areas, uh, kind of circle in, so to speak, uh, play the wind, stay out if it's, not, if it's not right, et cetera, et cetera. And when I ran into it, there were a couple of trees, and the reason why this deer was probably about seven or eight years old, the reason why he, nobody ever got him or even saw him on the trail cameras, there's over 30 trail cameras on about an 18-acre plot down there. And none of them are mine, they're all my uncles, but at the end of the day, they never saw him once on any trail camera. And I said, well, that should make it easy for me to identify where he's going. Sure. The problem is where he was going was in an area, the only place I could get a position on him was an old 1950s aluminum 12 foot uh, ladder stand that I had. And I had to put it on a tree that I had no ability to draw back. It's like, try, try shooting when, when you're like this. Yeah. Um, and so I tried here and I was up in my stand. It couldn't work. I had to sit the whole time. So I said, you know what, maybe I got to try the crossbow. And to be honest, at the time I was like, because there is, there is, uh, <laughs> bad <blood. laughs> there is bad blood kind of between the crossbow and the vertical <laughs> archers. You'll, you'll hear that as you get into it. But um, I said, you know what, if I'm going to take a deer like that and a crossbow is going to be the way that I can get him, I'm in. So I went out and I got the crossbow while I was still hunting with vertical as well. When I was hunting does and other properties, I would use my, my vertical. Uh, but whenever I had the setup, and that's where I really learned, like, it doesn't matter what you use as long as you're stacking the cards to your favor. And so for me, I sat there and he came up and I missed him this day, but it taught me several lessons. He came straight up at me. I'm on a, I'm on a ridge and he came straight up at me looking right at me. Everything was good to go. I was waiting for him to turn, come out of this thicket and turn broadside on an on a old hay road. And he didn't. The wind changed, blew, and he took off. But I'm like, you know what? I thought at that moment, I said, there's another benefit to the crossbow as well, which is all I had to do in order to hit him with this sitting on my lap was this. Yep. Already cocked, already loaded, already ready to go. So when he started coming in, I didn't have to worry about timing when I would, when I would draw my bow back. I didn't have to worry that he was going to see me. I didn't have to see, worry about any side profiles or anything. It was just as simple as this. And I had him sitting there just waiting, waiting, waiting. And he turned around and walked the other way. It ended up, it was actually the next season, next November, that I actually took him with a crossbow. I actually took him with an Excalibur crossbow. Um, out of a tree stand just sure. like that in the same situation and so I say you know what I mean at the end of the day the width of him and I'll show you a picture at some point but he was 24 we'll inches he was 24 inches wide yeah throw it up he was 24 inches wide um, I did the research found out he's the second widest he's not the tallest like other guys are gonna come in they're gonna have Jim Crockett and, yep, yep. and they're gonna have higher, higher points and so forth and so on but he was 24 inches wide and I, I did the research and I only found the only other deer that was that wide um, was actually the state record for the state of Ohio. 
Um, so he's a pretty serious deer, and I, I was I, I could not have taken him, to be honest. I could not have taken him. I'm sure several other hunters in the area have tried over the years and have missed him. Uh, just a really smart, wise deer that if you didn't have a crossbow in your hand, I, I don't think I would have been able to get him. Yeah. Um, and so take it for what it's worth. So now I actually carry both. And depending on my stand situation and where I see the deer at, I have both in, my, in, in, in the back of my truck and I just decide which one I'm going to use that day depending on my stand location. Yeah, and that's a really interesting, like nuanced perspective on the whole thing is, is it's mm -hmm. very use case based for you, which I think it's yeah. not for most people. Uh, you know, I find in talking to a lot of hunters that, you know, they would love to go hunt with their vertical bow, but they, they're not well practiced enough. They're not putting the time in or maybe they don't have the time. That's how they feel about it. Sure. So they pick up a crossbow. And, and that's one of those cases where I would rather you do that because your, your success potential goes way up with the crossbow compared to you being unpracticed with a vertical bow. Yeah, well, and, and, and to be fair, because of all of the thousands of hours that I put into vertical, I'm more accurate with vertical. I am. I, I could go out 60 even to 100 yards on a vertical bow and I will be more accurate than any crossbow you put in my hands or any air gun to, for that matter. And I don't know why that is. It just is something that connects in my brain better and my muscle memory and the way that I do things. Uh, the, vertical, the vertical archery is, is the way to go. But I said thousands of hours yeah. <laughs> yeah. to get there and I don't have thousands of hours shooting a crossbow. I'd have to be restringing it all the time. You know, guys, there, there's a huge breadth of product available when we talk about archery equipment, and there's tons of crossbows mm -hmm. that you can go right now on the website and see. There's also a ton of vertical bows coming to the website soon. So, you know, there, there's a, a great use case for both of these tools, and especially for those of you that maybe can't uh, physically use a vertical bow. You know, a crossbow is going to get you in the stand and do so very easily uh, and with something you can be very effective with. And I think ultimately mm -hmm. that's the important piece here. Um, and, and that's why Ron's here, guys. He's gonna be taking you through a lot of these crossbows, showing you the different kinds, showing you how they perform, uh, probably eventually getting into some vertical yeah, stuff as well. Yes. Uh, and more importantly, you know, you're gonna get to see the hunt. Uh, at some mm -hmm. point. So, mm -hmm. you know, once season rolls around, I'm expecting this guy to be up in a tree. I'll be up in a tree. We've got some other folks on Absolutely. staff that are going to be up in trees as well, uh, hopefully filming a bunch of stuff for you. Um, but this was a really brief introduction to archery equipment that we sell here at Pyramid Air. And I wanted to introduce you guys to Ron. I think you guys are going to find that he is super informative and really well knowledge on archery equipment. And so, Ron, Welcome to the YouTube Very good. channel. Thank you, Tyler. Thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. And uh, we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. You'll be seeing more of this guy and me real soon.